Hey, welcome back, everybody. So, Gilly G. Wilkers, we have the worst day in mortgage rates in over a year. Okay, so it's not quite that bad, but we did have some fluctuation in the markets. We did have, oh, I don't know, the perception of a little disinformation from the feds, or maybe disingenuous, or maybe they were just trying to affect the bonds. Nonetheless, uh, mortgage rates actually bobbled around, but they actually came down just a tad bit. Some of them went up. It just depends. We'll go into that later. But here's the key thing. Remember, mortgage rates go up and down because they are controlled by the stock market. Okay. And so depending on investors moving in and out of uh, bonds, mortgage-backed securities, keep an eye on your 10-year treasury. You want the the 10 year treasury to be really above 4% in many circumstances because that also, remember, when the treasuries go up, mortgage rates come down. When treasuries come down, mortgage rates go up. And so, as we look at you know, what is happening uh, on the, the, the bigger global scale of things, it's super important because the feds, even though they don't control, they don't, uh, you know, they do not dictate what long-term mortgages. They only do HELOCs, what home equity line of credits, car loans, credit cards, what banks lend to each other, commercial loans, uh, which are the ones that are uh, going to be most affected by their choice not to uh, drop rate. Uh, you know, as they control those, they can have an effect on mortgages, on your real estate long-term mortgages. So. Anyway, keep that in mind. If you have questions, uh, you know, just link to uh, one of uh, one of my pages. Uh, this one, like right here. Let me blow that up for you. Uh, so this actually gives you uh, an indication of what's going on in real time when we talk about mortgages and everything else that's going on. Uh, it is free. There's no cost for this. Send me a, a quick question and we'll, we'll hook you up. Uh, it's also that link will be uh, in the narrative. But this way, it'll allow you guys to be able to come in and actually get some really solid information. All right. Now, let's take a look at some more information. So get a load of this. So U.S. consumer confidence, right? Uh, has actually at its highest since 2021. Now, okay, so let's be re let's be real about this. Well, you can tell, you know, it's at 114.8 uh, as of quote unquote today, technically yesterday. But you can see that everything has been relatively low when it comes to uh, consumer confidence, primarily because of rates because of, well, back in uh, 2020, we had the beer issue. Yes, I can't say the word because they they don't like it. Don't ask me why, but uh, YouTube does their nasty little game with us. So anyway, the beer issue that starts with a C. And uh, of course, you saw that consumer confidence go down, but super important, uh, that is one of our most aggressive and amazing years ever. Same thing with 2021, which is where they're coming back to. Why are they saying this? Oh, look, it's super simple, right? This is a, the consumer confidence is, you know, they ask a couple of questions of a gaggle of people and they give responses back like, hey, what do you think of the economy? Hey, is this a year to buy a home? Hey, do you have more confidence in buying a home? Do you have more confidence in your job? Okay, stability, security. And they come back and that's where they, on a very generic level, right? How they come up with this chart. And a lot of folks are saying, look, you know, yeah, since uh, really November, rates have been coming down. Consumer confidence is going up. Uh, more homes are being purchased. They're going under contract more than it's coming live. And so with that, as you are looking at what's happening in the market, hey, they're saying, look, this is the best uh, we've seen since 2021. It's not that, it, it's a small amount over the other year. Sure, 2021 was a lot better, of course. However, it's, it is and it isn't that big of a deal. Just saying. All right, moving on. Okay, so when we take a look at this, we, uh, so of all things, DuPont, <laughs> and for those of you that don't know where DuPont is, DuPont is actually down by the uh, joint base, uh, you know, Fort Lewis and, uh, and uh, McCord, which is just south of Tacoma, they hit uh, the top 10, according to realtor.com, that says, hey, listen, this is 
the one of the top places in the United States to buy as a first time home buyer to buy a home. Why? Well, they look at demographics, they look at population, they look at medium uh, home prices versus inventory that's available and commute times to uh, you know uh, employment areas since DuPont is a what's called a bedroom community. I don't mean that in any other way other than a lot of communities that service core commercial areas are considered bedroom communities. All right, now, when we look at that, they actually hit one of the top 10 and because their median price, I think it was like 512,000 versus the median price in that area, which is, uh, well, the county is like 715, $720,000. Okay, that makes sense. It's a super cute little town, but for those first time home buyers looking down south, that might be a great option for you. All right, moving on. Let's talk about what the Northwest MLS is doing. Super, super interesting. Uh, we are still seeing some massive activity and we're seeing a lot of things that are coming up. In fact, let's go over to our seven day running average. Okay, so as we take a look at a few things that now let's roll into kind of the, the year over year. So when we pop over, we take a look at this. Actually, before we do that, let's take a look at the chart. So some folks are saying, George, how in the heck did, uh, how did January spell out? Now, these are a lot of numbers you're going to get long before other areas, uh, probably by a week because, well, we do monitor them in real time and... Uh, Anyway, there's going to be a little bit of adjustment, but not a whole lot. Let's take a look at this. So as you can see, our list price to sales price ratio, that was 97%. And that actually was up from 95%. And then, of course, when uh, we drew that red line across, uh, seasonally normal, okay, to see market times go up. Uh, we saw an average of about 50 days which when we take a look at last year was uh, lower than where we were at last year. Super, super important because then as we take a look at this chart, we take a look at the Northwest MLS. Listen, um, last week we were, uh, our pendants were up 1.3%, 1.4%. We're actually down 1.4% this month, roughly about a 2%, 2.6% uh, shift. However, we are still seeing some really great numbers. In fact, let's just dial in what we saw year over year, 
All right, now let's take a look at new construction. New construction absolutely has continued to outperform existing homes. And that's uh, not uncommon because there's a lot of incentives that builders are offering right now, even though inventory is uh, is suffering a little bit. But here's the thing. Let's, uh, let's go ahead and let's take a look at uh, the same thing. Let's look at year over year for January and just an, an overall outlook. So let's, uh, let's blow this up and let's hit this one. So here we go. Okay, now understand new construction is seeing a huge uh, impact on our market because of incentives. Existing home sellers, they have the same opportunities. Just make sure that you're talking to the agent that you're interviewing or uh, you know the team you're interviewing or the person you're working with. Just ask them, hey, how can you do this? And if they aren't able to articulate how best to do that, you may want to look a little further. Anyway, I'm just saying, do what you need to do to get the best information. Make sure that you're not working with an agent that does the four Ps, right? They put up a sign, they put a key box in, uh, or put a key box out, to put it in the MLS, and then they pray that it sells. Please don't be one of those people. Make sure you do your homework. Make sure you're being accurate in how they're getting your home sold and how best to compete with all of the other listings that are out there in the market. Okay, it's how you get highest and best dollar in the least amount of time, the fewest hassles. All right, uh, let's take a look at new cons or uh, uh, our bank owned. So, bank owned. Sometimes when we take a look at those numbers, uh, initially you might say, "Oh my gosh, George, that's crazy!" And in fact, let's just blow up this chart here.
All right. So if you have any other questions about bank owned properties and whatnot, hey, do a reach out. Uh, we do answer all of the questions that come in in about 30 minutes. However, on Sundays, eh, it takes a little bit longer, right? That's all right. It's a, more of a day off. However, if you have questions, make sure you ask those questions. We love answering them. There's no strings attached. <laughs> we don't bomb you later uh, with marketing material. We just answer your question. There we go. All right. So let's take a look at uh, some more information. But first, if you enjoy accurate information, listen, make sure you like the video. Look, it just helps everybody understand this is good quality, no selling information. And make sure you subscribe. Send it to uh, two people that you like and one person you don't like. Look, let's uh, let's just help out as many people as possible. All right, here we go. Freddie Mac, um, here's the thing. Let's blow this up for you guys real quick. All right, so rates have been bobbling around between 6 and uh, 6.5 uh, to 6.7, 6.8. Then they came back down again. Look, there's a lot of solid information that is out there. Make sure, again, that you watch the five questions to ask when getting quoted mortgage rates. Again, it's just a really great way to help you understand where things are at. So as an example here, as you can see, we've got some uh, pricing for just King County alone. Uh, conforming is uh, basically 6.125. Conforming is up to about 666,000, I think 500. Uh, anyway, 766,000. Uh, if you look at a jumbo, uh, jumbo's at one 0.149 million, that's your loan balance. Uh, and you'll know that uh, those rates are just a little bit lower. There are some points that go with it, almost a single point that uh, gets brought into that. That is super important to understand so you know what the actual cost is on that first buy down. Most of the time, first buy downs on rates are really worthwhile. After that, pretty much the, 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 it's the cost for repayment is just too much. And it also depends how long are you going to be in that home. That is a big picture. All right. Now, as we roll in, uh, make sure that you guys are looking at the true cost of any mortgage. Again, what is quoted in the morning can be completely different than what is quoted in the afternoon, right? And if you have questions, listen, here's another free chart for you. Uh, it's not a chart. It's actually the calculators. They'll be posted down below. You can, uh, it's free. There's no cost. There's no marketing. Uh, you can do up to four different loans side by side, looking at different options. Uh, for those folks that, uh, you know, got your financing, you know, when you were uh, in the sevens, hey, is it cost effective for me to refinance? Look, there's a refinance calculator. It's super simple for you. All right. The goal is, is to get you as much information as possible so you can make the best business decision. That's what these videos are. Anyway, so with that, remember, subscribe, smash that subscribe button, like and share our videos, let everybody know that you like the information, continue to ask these really great questions. Uh, I want to welcome Leslie and her family to our family as far as, uh, you know, people that we're going to be meeting and helping. Thank you very much. And uh, in the meantime, I will chat with you guys on the next video. Take care.